Metacosis perfect snellus is back. Let's continue endocrine physiology. The previous two videos were part one and part two. Today it's time for part three. We'll talk about the parathyroid glands, the adrenal medulla, and the endocrine pancreas. This is my playlist. Please watch these videos in order. Who is the CEO? Hypothalamus. General manager, pituitary. Then you have three employees that listen to the pituitary and three independent contractors that are not connected to the pituitary. And today we'll talk about these, the parathyroid, adrenal medulla, pancreas. Parathyroid gland secretes the parathyroid hormone. The adrenal medulla secretes epinephrine or epinephrine dopamine. The endocrine pancreas secretes insulin, glucagon, and somatostatin. Do you remember these? Yep, these were the employees discussed before. Now to the independent contractors, parathyroid glands, you find them behind the thyroid gland. What do they secrete? Parathyroid hormone. What's the main function of the parathyroid hormone? To raise the calcium level in your blood. That's it. How do you do it? Three mechanisms, resorption, absorption, reabsorption. Resorption of bone to get the calcium out into the blood. Absorption of calcium in the gut and then reabsorption of calcium in the kidney. Remember that the parathyroid hormone also stimulates one alpha hydroxylase enzyme to activate vitamin D to become the active vitamin D3 or calcitriol. In other words, vitamin D is the loyal son of the parathyroid hormone because parathyroid hormone is the reason for its existence. Parathyroid hormone is trying to increase calcium in the blood. How? By resorbing bone, getting the calcium out. By absorbing calcium in the intestine and reabsorbing calcium in the kidney. All of these will raise your serum calcium level. But it doesn't stop there because parathyroid hormone is a phosphate trashing hormone. It decreases serum phosphate. How about calcitonin? It's an SOB. It decreases everything. Decreases serum calcium, decreases serum phosphate. How did it decrease calcium? Well, by inhibiting resorption, inhibiting absorption, and inhibiting reabsorption of calcium. How did it decrease serum phosphate? By trashing it into the urine. And here comes vitamin D3. A new generation, it will increase serum phosphate. This is the only one that increases serum phosphate. Look at the previous two doofuses. My goodness, I'm trashing the phosphate. I'm also trashing the phosphate. This is dangerous because you need adenosine triphosphate. This is the currency of energy. So you need phosphate. If you're trashing your phosphate, you're going to die. Vitamin D3 is going to save the day by increasing serum phosphate. Moreover, vitamin D3 is loyal to his daddy. Who's your daddy? PTH. That's why I will also raise the serum calcium. How does vitamin D3 raise the serum calcium and the serum phosphate? By absorbing calcium and phosphate in the gut and by monitoring the bone. So if we have less calcium in the blood, I will destroy some bone to get the calcium out. But if I have tons of calcium in the serum, I will add some to the bone. It actually has a brain. We're done with the parathyroid gland. Now let's talk about the endocrine pancreas. Please refer to a previous video of mine titled Insulin World vs. Glucagon World. As you know, the pancreas is exocrine and endocrine. Exocrine is duct, endocrine has no duct. Exocrine secretes the secretions, these are enzymes, into the duodenum, nearby location. But endocrine pancreas will dump the secretions directly into the blood which will take it to distant locations. Exocrine pancreas secretes digestive enzymes. Endocrine pancreas secretes hormones. Enzymes like what? Amylase, lipase, colipase, trypsin, chymotrypsin, all of this lovely stuff. The pancreatic hormones are glucagon from the alpha cell, insulin from the beta cell, somatostatin from the delta cell of the islets of Langerhans. Glucagon is catabolic. Insulin is anabolic. Somatostatin is a universal inhibitor. It inhibits everything. It inhibits glucagon secretion. It inhibits insulin secretion. It even inhibits its own secretion. Talking about insane. 
Glucagon increases glucose in the blood. Insulin decreases glucose in the blood. Somatostatin inhibits everything. How did glucagon increase glucose in the blood? Well, it destroyed glycogen and broke it down to glucose because glucagon is catabolic. How did insulin decrease glucose? Well, it took it to the cell and brought it into the cell, decreasing glucose that's available in the blood. Why does insulin do this? Because insulin is anabolic. Insulin wants you to take that glucose, put it into the cell, build it up to glycogen. And here's the tale of two worlds. Insulin stan versus glucagon stan. Insulin is a builder, glucagon a destroyer. Insulin is anabolic, glucagon is catabolic. Insulin prevails in the feeding state, glucagon dominates the fasting state. That was beautiful. Insulin is anabolic, protein anabolic, glycogen anabolic, fat anabolic. What do you mean by protein anabolic? Take the small amino acids, build them into big proteins. How about glycogen anabolic? Take the small glucose molecules, build them up into glycogen. And then fat anabolic, free fatty acids into triglycerides. Insulin stimulates proteogenesis, glycogenesis, lipogenesis. Insulin inhibits the other doofuses that we will discuss right now. Glucagon stimulates these doofuses because glucagon is catabolic. Glucagon stimulates proteolysis and therefore glucagon inhibits proteogenesis. Glucagon is catabolic, glycogen to glucose, triglycerides into free fatty acids. Put differently, glucagon stimulates glycogenolysis and inhibits glycogen synthesis. Glucagon stimulates lipolysis, glucagon inhibits lipogenesis. Insulin and glucagon could not have been more different. Even though both are secreted from the pancreas, both are secreted from the endocrine pancreas, both are secreted from the islets of Langerhans, which are prevalent in the body and the tail of the pancreas. Moreover, both of them are secreted from adjacent cells, beta cells, alpha cells, very closely related. Yet the functions could not have been more opposite. We're done with the endocrine pancreas, it's time to talk about the adrenal medulla. What does the adrenal medulla secrete? Epinephrine or epinephrine dopamine. Do not confuse the adrenal medulla with the adrenal cortex. The adrenal cortex has glomerulosa fasciculata articularis, the cortex is under the influence of the anterior pituitary via ACTH hormone. The adrenal medulla has nothing to do with the anterior pituitary. The adrenal medulla is part of the nervous system. Remember this beautiful preganglionic fiber? Yep, it was preganglionic autonomic. It released acetylcholine onto nicotinic sub N receptor. And this stimulated the adrenal medulla, which is part of the sympathetic response. This will secrete epinephrine, norepinephrine, and dopamine. To help you fight flight, run from a tiger. This is what happens in the adrenal medulla. Phenylalanine, tyrosine. Dopa, dopamine, norepinephrine, epinephrine. Phenylalanine, tyrosine. Dopa, dopamine, noradrenaline, adrenaline. Dopamine, noradrenaline, and adrenaline are collectively known as catecholamines. How do you convert phenylalanine to tyrosine? Phenylalanine hydroxylase. Tyrosine to dopa, tyrosine hydroxylase. Dopa to dopamine by the dopa decarboxylase. Dopamine to norepinephrine, dopamine beta hydroxylase. To convert noradrenaline to adrenaline, you need phenylethanolamine N methyl transferase. And where do you get the methyl from? From the methyl donor, Uncle Sam. Where did Sam come from? From methionine. What's the name of the tumor of the adrenal medulla that secretes tons of catecholamines? It's called phalochromocytoma. If you like this video, you will adore my endocrine pharmacology course available on my website, medicosisperfectionetis.com. Learn about the different kinds of insulin. Learn about the calculation of the dose of insulin in this epic course. I also have a video about cardiac pharmacology course if you want to learn about the antiarrhythmics, antihyperlipidemics, antianginal, antihypertensives, diuretics, and Mr. Djoxin.
to watch some free samples of the cardiac pharmacology course, I have a playlist here on YouTube called Medicosis Cardiac Pharmacology. To download this course, go to medicosisperfectionetis.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionetis, where medicine makes perfect sense.